Uh, do you think that film uh, pop music provides good source material or inspiration for uh, Hindi film music? Yes, it does. And I think we can trace it right back to the beginnings of Hindi films made uh, in India. I mean, if you remember Beju Bhavra and if you remember uh, Mother India, you know, I mean, uh, films of uh, tremendous popular appeal, mass appeal, have borrowed very, very heavily from folk music of various states. I think, in fact, a lot of folk music from UP has been popularized in our films. And more so uh, from Punjab, uh, if you've noticed in the last uh, couple of decades, let's say, 80s and 90s, you know, uh, Yash Chopra, uh, Nahisa Aditya Chopra. I mean, you know, you can see that uh, they have borrowed from the roots and uh, naturally redecorated it and reinterpreted it. And, you know, folk music is so earthy and rustic that it has a universal appeal. And as we know, it's carried down with oral tradition. So it's always kept a feel of the soil and roots. So the sentiments that are expressed through the musical form has always appealed to any strata of society. And uh, just something which is very connected to Rudali. Yeah. Why did you adapt a home home? Considering it's been such an old Asmis song, which has almost been like an anthem there. What yeah. What prompted you to uh, add that, incorporate that in your film? I think I was more, uh, as you said, I, you know, I was more taken up by Bhupendra's tune. It's a very beautiful tune, not only in terms of sur and uh, in terms of um, listening pleasure, but in terms of musical form. And at that point of time, I didn't really feel it was necessary that, in fact, I had problems with Gulzar Saab because he had just done Lakin before me or after me, I forget. And he kept saying, no, Kalpana, when you're shooting in Rajasthan, you must take heavily from Mand and, you know, uh, the folk tradition only. But I disagree because it was not a Rajasthani folk tale I was speaking about. It was a story of a woman. And I felt Dil Hum Hum Kare, uh, which Gulzarji has very beautifully transcreated. And Dada's musical formation of the tune was like a plaintive cry of this woman who could not cry. So that's the reason why I took it. And uh, very many people ask me, what I did was, I have used the actual folk music of Rajasthan as effect in the sense we went there on location, Bhupendra and myself with Ashwin Balsavar, my sound recordist and we, we recorded actual folk singers and I've used it. I've used it in the portions where Rakhi and Dimple, like Sanichari and Bhikni are watching a village performance and you see this folk singer singing and then probably when she's sitting huddled up outside her hut Late in the night, in a distance, you can hear those folk singers sing for realism and effect. But for what you call poetic flight and imagination, which of, that's the artistic license a filmmaker takes, I have taken the original compositions of Dr. Hazarikas, which do not necessarily have Assamese flavor. We tend to call it Assamese because he happened to tune it in Assam. But if you look at Dil Humum Kare, or the other song, Jhuti Muti Mitwa, or Sameo Dheere Chalo, they are all based on classical ragas. So they are modern, creative music. And because he's such a great folk interpreter as well, besides being a modern, creative um, composer, people tend to get confused and think that Rudali's songs are folk music of Assam. They are not. They are modern, creative tunes based on classical rag. Right. Okay, this is... Um yeah. Did you, uh, do you know what kind of music, did, was he into folk music? Oh yes, uh -huh. in fact his uh, uh, major, I'll tell you, his main support system for music was S.D. Burman and my uncle was born and brought up, he was born in Bangalore but brought up in Calcutta, so very influenced by Eastern Indian music, not necessarily only Bengali but you know, the flavour of the area around and uh, right from uh, Piyasa, um, Kagas Ke Pool, all of them, uh, which are his masterpieces, he has used folk music interpreted by S.D. Burman and modern creative music by S.D. Burman. Now, if you come to Chaudhvi Ka Chand, all the folk music of UP was used, utilized because it was based against Lucknow. So, he was very true to his backdrop. He didn't confuse the 
um, authenticity of musical form and then of course he used master poets so it gave a tremendous upliftment to the song itself by not only the musical form but by the content but he was a musical genius i mean uh, he knew how to get the best out of every music composer even opie nayar who was one of his favorites has taken very heavily from punjabi folk music in his work i think it was cid if i'm not mistaken you know mr and mrs 55 i think that's what opie nayar did so ravi ji had done chaudhri ka chan then hemant kumar who did music for sahib bir gulam uh, also contributed a great deal from bengali folk so he was definitely was influenced thank you okay thank you thank you so much patna not at all